If a baby is born at 11 p.m. in California and another baby is born at 2 a.m. in New York, they have different birthdays even though they were born at the same time. Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. I'm your host Connor Monroe and the killer whale is the natural predator of the moose. Why am I spitting all these weird facts you ask? Well that's because today it's all about screwing with your mind. By the way, thank you for already hitting like and subscribe. I could actually see you do it. And now that you're looking at the buttons to see if I'm right, you might as well click them. Oh boy, this is gonna be a fun video. Cause today we're talking the top 10 scary games that mess with your mind, baby. Roll the intro. Backwards. In at 10, Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Eternal Darkness is a psychological horror action adventure game from Nintendo for the GameCube. The game is similar to Resident Evil in a way, but distinguishes itself with unique features. Memorably, it's sanity effects. In the game, you take on the role of several characters as they battle a powerful entity who seeks to enslave humanity. You know, typical villain dreams. The way this game melts your mind is by using sanity effects. These things mess with your game in such a way that you think your TV is glitching. The game gives you a fake blue screen of death, fakes the screen going to black, fakes changing channels, and even fake mutes your game. You will be second guessing everything in this game. And of course, most of these effects come right in the middle of a fight, so as you panic to try to fix the issue, there is no real issue. You're just unplugging your console for no reason. It's just there to melt your brain. And at 9, Dead Space 3. Every monster you fight in the Dead Space series are creations of the Marker, an alien artifact that can drive people slowly insane. In the second game in the series, you experience the hallucinations this insanity brings. And in Dead Space 3, the effect of the Marker is similar. It works in the same way in multiplayer as well. However, when you hallucinate, it's exclusive to your screen, not your partner's, meaning you both don't see the same thing. Further adding to the mind screwery is that these are all hallucinations. It's as if you two are really hallucinating and not just seeing the same thing, which is pretty damn abrasive. Can you imagine a system like this in another game? Like you think of any other game where you really shouldn't be seeing what is there, but your friends are seeing it as well in the same place. Now imagine you saw them in different places. Just It's like a really bad glitchy multiplayer mod for a single player game. <laughs> Skyrim together. Now that is sure screwery. That's a word, right? And at 8, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. While the series itself is the embodiment of psychological horror, Shattered Memories watches you. And I don't mean like in a tinfoil hat, everything is watching you kind of thing, even if it is true. I mean that in a the game pays attention to your action in the game sort of way. It does so and is able to put them through some form of algorithm or some other form of code to be able to adapt the game to your choices. The game gets inside your head and makes you question everything just by paying attention. Hear that, ladies? Maybe your boy friend not listening to you is a good thing. If he did, he'd be able to get inside your head. Well, the whole series is just about mind f So if you see a dog controlling the whole thing, along with everything that's been going on in the game, it's probably just normal. Especially at this point. Number 7, Inside. Everyone is scared of the unknown. It's what fear is. We don't know if something is lurking in the dark, so we're afraid. We don't know what death is like, so we come up with ideas about what it could be. We don't know if this new food will taste good or make me pay for it twice, so I'm scared to eat it. Fear of the unknown is something everyone can relate to, but in Inside, you literally know nothing, Jon Snow. You play as a nameless kid who has to outrun and overcome a cluster of deadly obstacles, rabid dogs, hydro monsters, and remote control corpses. And the ending of the game is so confusing I don't think anyone has figured it out yet. This game is set in the future when a government has created a dystopia. Not knowing is what is really screwing with you. Who are you? Why are you running? What are we running from? Are we running to something? Is any of this actually real? Are we in a simulation? Did they really send KFC to outer space? All of those questions come flooding out, and in all honesty, I'd rather not know. And at 6, Layers of Fear. This game will have you questioning every single one of your memories as well as your last steps. In Layers of Fear, you walk the same path over and over, but each time something changes. It gets to a point where you'll be questioning if that chair was on the other side of the room, or if that candle at the end of the hall was lit last time. Lit? You'll even begin to question if things are ever really moving at all, causing you to wonder if you did the last pass correctly or if you really need to go to therapy. Every small detail will start screaming at you like a banshee on acid and it will make you so paranoid you'll even wonder if you are still playing the game after you've turned it off. Layers of fear f 
yeah. Halfway through at number five, Home. Home is a unique horror adventure from a Toronto indie developer. Beautiful pixel based graphics are somehow still able to evoke a sense of overwhelming dread and fear in this wonderful game. The graphics are chilling, but combined with jump inducing sound effects, making this game on the level of even Silent Hill. The game is about Rachel's husband, who wakes up in a strange dark room in an unfamiliar house. He has no memory of how he got there, where his wife is, or how to get home. He only starts to panic when he finds out a serial killer is at large and his wife may be a target. This game also includes text based choices. You make these choices as you explore new environments and they ultimately shape the story. Some seem small but in the end all choices culminate into the ending that will leave your mind blown. So go check it out if you'd like to. The game can be found on its own website and is just two dollars. That's the same price we paid for lasagna boy. So might as well do it. Support smaller developers people and your local grocer. Or farmer. In at 4, Ben 3.exe. This was on my best exe games list for a good reason. This game will screw with you for what feels like months. But actually, it's only a couple of hours. This game starts as more of a text based conversation, showing you a black screen than your desktop. This game takes control of your computer almost like a virus. You never know if the game crashed or if it's faking it. I was playing this game, then it crashed, so I loaded up the forest. An hour later, I get jump scared by the exe. It was hidden from Task Manager, and it's not a Steam game, so nothing tells you if another game is running. Even opening another game, which would normally be blocked by Steam because another game is running, but it's not a Steam game. I don't feel like my computer is safe anymore. I can't handle using it for long periods of time. I deleted the EXE and I'm still worried. Nothing has happened since, but it's always in the back of my mind. In at 3, The Interlude. The Interlude isn't your typical horror. It's more about keeping you on the edge of your seat and on your last nerve rather than jump scares and horrific monsters. The Interlude is about tension. You sit in your car waiting for someone who you're supposed to be meeting with. All you can do is sit, in real time, waiting for the individual. You can fumble around nervously, turning on the windshield wipers, playing snake on your low Kia phone. Yeah, let's keep that low Kia. Reading your old messages, listening to the radio, but you remain seated the whole time, because you can imagine what would happen if you didn't. You don't know who you're meeting and you don't know when you'll meet them. All you know is that you want to stay safe in your car. Who do you think you're meeting? What is their backstory and why are you meeting? Let me know your version in the comments section. I am actually meeting Joseph, an FBI agent who has important documents for me about a current court case. We met when he decided to take a dump on my car windshield, cause okay I guess. I'm staying in my car because I have a feeling he will let me know it's him by doing the same thing again. Oh, and he's a bird. Because the birds work for the bourgeoisie. In at 2, Last Year. Last Year is a game I recently discovered. Unfortunately, my computer can't run it at its best settings because this game will screw with your head if you're a survivor. The survivors in this game are referred to as students and they have to try to complete their missions to escape from the killer. The killer can despawn and respawn, turning into a ghost, where he can walk through doors and place traps and stuff. You know. Typical killer stuff. But they can only do this when out of sight of a player. So the killer can run around a corner and then vanish and you won't really know where they've gone. It can really drive you insane when you're about to kill them and you're on their tail, but they vanish quickly. Then they start placing traps all around you and snaring you because you aren't paying attention. Then they kill you because you're trapped. Yeah, it's really messed and trust me, if I could play it well, I would be taking advantage of everything I could. Finally, in at number one, get even. Take a deep breath. Try to remember, a girl, a chair, a bomb. Just keep calm. Follow the voice into the depths of your memory. Relax. Search for the darkest memories in the deepest recesses of your mind. Can you find her? The clock is ticking, and this is only part of the treatment. Get Even is about Black, a mercenary and gun for hire, when he wakes up in a mysterious asylum with no memory of his past. Under the guidance of his captor, Red, Black embarks on a guided, air quotes, treatment facilitated by unique technology, a headset that allows you to relive your memories. With the help of the Pandora headset, you travel into the depths of your mind to explore what truly happened when he tried to rescue a girl with a bomb strapped to her chest. Or was he trying to save her? This game is all about memories. Empire rated this game a 4 out of 5, it said that this game sets out to mess with your mind and it succeeds commendably. When a game is all about memories, it can really screw with the player, since what we are seeing isn't technically what we are playing. And even worse, the game is addicting. Once you start understanding things, you won't be able to stop playing. But once you start understanding things, it's like you are living in these moments as well. You'll forget they aren't your memories, and you'll wonder why these events shaped you into the person that you are today, but the reality is, they didn't. There we have it friends, the top 10 scary games that mess with your mind. If you enjoyed, be sure you hit like and subscribe for daily gaming content and ring that bell to level up. Or maybe you already did that at the beginning of the video because like, 
I'm psychic. Plus, let me know in the comments what games screw with your mind. Personally, I think Scribble Knots really got to me. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been in Shower Man Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.